Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Agile Uprising podcast. I am a solo host this week, Chris Merman, and we have something I think is is a little bit different than our normal our normal kind of uh, uh, spiel that we kind of go at you. You know, normally we're doing a lot of topics and approaches and ideas, and and I have uh, a really interesting organization I want to spend some time talking about this week. So with me is Larry Apke from the Job Hackers. Say hello, Larry. Hello, guys. How you doing? Uh, Larry, I am I am so glad you're you're here on the podcast. I we've this is the second time we've spoke, and um, every time we speak, I, I just feel I feel better and better. Um, the uh, tell I guess tell the folks a little bit about um, kind of how you got started in Agile. How you know you know you don't have to read your old resume, but just kind of how, how, tell me a little bit about your Agile journey. Yeah, certainly. It, it, it was probably about you know uh, fourteen you know twelve fourteen years ago. I was a director of software development. We got a new VP in and he brought Agile in. Um, and I hadn't really experienced anything uh, Agile and Scrum and uh, did a little training. And, and you know, the, the very first thing I thought of is, gosh, what, what's the what's the big deal here? Uh, it took me a while to figure <laughs> out that it, that it really was a big deal. Um, I had been used to uh, working uh, for myself and, and felt that I was fairly Agile. And, and then, you know, I started really doing some research and, and looking things up. And I went down that rabbit hole and, you know, 12, 14 years later, you know, here I am still doing that research, still trying to figure out, um, you know, things, how to, how to build software better and get it to our customers sooner and, and how to improve quality and, and how do we increase engagement and all the, you know, the wonderful things that agile brings to the world. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, the, the more we learn, the more we learn that we have more to learn. Absolutely. It's, it's been, a, it's been a long, it's been a long road and, and my, my reading list just keeps getting longer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I are one of, one of the fellow board members, Jay Hirschko. He, 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 he like every time he hears uh, someone else mention a book, he's like, damn it, you gave me something else to read now. That's it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's funny. We, we actually have a lot of the same uh, similar connections in the, in the community. And so it's, it's funny. We've, we've not crossed paths before, but, uh, but here we are now, but we're not here to brag about Larry, uh, even though we probably could if we wanted to. Uh, Larry is, uh, Larry's kind of, I don't know, I don't guess, what, what would you say your, your title is with Job Hackers? Well, I gave myself the title Chief Agile Officer because uh, okay. it's my nonprofit and I got to give out the title. So that's what it there is. You go, there you go. <laughs> All right. Chief Agile Officer of, of the Job Hackers. So. Um, for those that haven't, um, maybe you maybe you've heard of it before. And maybe that's why you're here to hear more about it. Um, so we're, thank you so much for trying us out. But for those that haven't heard of the Job Hackers, Larry, what kind of what's the elevator pitch of of what your your org does? Yeah, Job, job Hackers is all about providing some upskilling to people, helping them to find work. Um, you know, when I started it, I saw a lot of very talented people who were out of work. And, you know, I, I said to myself, if, you know, if they had a little bit of agile and scrum knowledge, they might be able to, you know, do better in the interviews, they might be able to take that knowledge and, and uh, you know, leverage it into a job. Um, so I started teaching some classes that started working with people and, and, and we found out that, you know, people loved the classes and, and people were getting jobs. Um, and it was making a difference in the community. So, you know, we just kept doing it and eventually became a, an official 501c3 nonprofit organization and, and we've been that way for two and a half years now. Yeah, found, you found it in October of 2017, so getting getting darn close to, to three years. Now, you, you started it in San Francisco where you're based out of, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I, you know, I had, I had gone to see a, a place in, in uh, Sunnyvale. Uh, they had a meeting for people who are unemployed and, and looking for work. And I saw all these wonderful people and I said, I've got to do something. And so that was really about four or five years ago when I started coming up to the Bay Area and, and eventually uh, migrated up here. Uh, and then, you know, we, we started running the classes before we became a nonprofit, but officially in 2000, uh, October 2017, uh, now the I, I think from from the students that I've talked to the kind of the early days were kind of just sitting in a room kind of chatting about you know what do you know about agile and it was just kind of this uh, very organic conversation of what do you know and what do you think like what was it like developing 
you know, it's nobody in the audience, we're all used to the material that we go through training classes in, and we're used to kind of developing materials and workshops and such on our own. So I don't think that is necessarily as curious, more of like how, what was the conversation like with this group of people that was different um, than, than maybe your kind of your usual training class? I think the couple of things that are different is, is we do it over time. So it's, it's, a, it's a class that lasts six weeks. And, and originally what we were doing is basically reading a lot of what I considered the most profound books in and around Agile. And, and they wouldn't necessarily be, here's how to do Scrum, but we, we read things like Drive and, um, you know, uh, Fifth Discipline and, and other books that, you know, Principles of Product Development Flow, and these are still in par part of our curriculum. Um, systems thinking and, and, and other things. So it wasn't, I, I think, a typical Agile Scrum class in the sense that you know, we talked about a lot of things that were more, I, I would consider, you know, mental models or mindset uh, type of work, a lot of philosophical, theoretical stuff, but, but getting people to understand kind of the difference between knowledge-based work and, 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 you know, physical work and, and what that entails. So it was, it was different than a lot of your, your normal, you know, CSM type of classes. Right. Whereas a lot of, a lot of training classes that we've traditionally gone to, it's like, you get the why, you know, you know, your mind either may already be turned on to this different way of, of working or you're on the way of, of your mind being turned. And you really just need to know the how kind of a thing you kind of pull back, um, especially since you don't have to, cram all the training into two or three days right you can you can step back and say let's let's help you understand that why let's help you give you that 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 mindset and i, I think that uh I, I think it's probably something we should all go through especially mm -hmm. those of us especially if you've been in the industry a while not that i'm suggesting we all run through it but it is a it is something that kind of changes the, the the mindset of these of these training class you do so what what was what was the reception like early on when you when you kind of went you know with these people that were very new to the the industry right what were those kind of what were those early results like well the early results were, were fantastic which kept me go, you know kept me going because we i remember we placed a couple people and helped place a couple people in, in scrum master or, or i think project coordinator project manager positions um, and, and that kind of gave me the fuel to keep moving. Um, but the, the response from the audience over the years has been really tremendous to that, that style of learning because it, it makes it a little bit more, I would say, generic. Um, even though we use software development where Agile and Scrum come from as a metaphor for a lot of what we're doing, and that's where my you know, decades of experience comes from, um, we, we talk about it in a way that, that translates it to pretty much all knowledge work um, so that you could, you know, apply this to education or marketing or, or you know, architectural design or, or a whole bunch of other areas. Um, and we've taken out, in some cases over the years, we've taken out a lot of the pure technical stuff. We, deal t we talk about t uh, quality and we talk about other ways to get uh, technical quality specifically because we're using software development as a metaphor but we get people from all walks of life. I mean, all ages, all races, all gen, you know, we, we have a high rate of, of, of diversity um, and we get, we take everyone um, as long as they're interested. And so it's become more and more, I would say generic over time, but I think still is valuable. Yeah. Let's talk about that in terms of like who comes to your class, because again, um, starting off with just, Hey, people out of work that don't have a lot of, I remember one in our first conversation, one thing you told me that really stood out is, um, what's the one thing that we all need to get our job that they don't have and you can't get from a training class and that's experience, right? right. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's a pretty daunting task to take, take people out of work that don't have experience, that have the, that are, want to learn a different mindset, that have that right attitude, that have that growth mindset, right? Um, that's kind of challenging enough as it is, right? But then, you know, like, tell me more about the kinds of people, like, where, where do you find students from? Like, what kind of, what kind of situation are they in in life? Instead of, not just out of work, but there's, your students come from a variety of walks of life, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and, and we're always doing outreach with, with different areas. But, you know, we'll talk a little bit by the, about the numbers first. 
Um, average age for those who, who give it to us is 43. So we're not just talking kids out of college. These are generally professional people who just need a little bit of help. Um, we do a lot of outreach with, with uh, programs that are, that are uh, primarily helping women. So we have about two thirds of our participants are women, uh, which is unheard of in the, in the technical world. Um, uh, and, and they've got some things they could probably learn from us. Um, and about 50% of the people are people of color. And we continue to reach into uh, communities that are underserved to see what we can do. So we're working a lot with the African-American community. We're working a lot with the Latino community. Um, our, my goal is to, to, if anybody needs our assistance, we're going to go out and try to find them. Uh, we work with a lot of great partners as well. Um, so uh, job, job workforce programs and other things, uh, and they send us people all the time, and we love, we love to have them. But we, we never have given anybody some kind of test or pre, you know, we, we don't screen people. So we'll, we'll take whoever feels they can benefit. And, and that's why we have such diversity. Yeah, you've, um, you know, I think through the end of last year, you've had over 500 people go through your program. And I think you're shooting for potentially another 500 just this year alone, right? Yeah, we're on we're on track to get about 500 this year. We we've estimated a, we've given o, easily over a million dollars worth of free training. That's the one thing I had to keep remember you know reminding people is this is absolutely 100 percent free, right. um, and, and and it's all volunteer organization. So um, yeah, we we are looking at now probably 500 this year. Um, we, we will be nearing a uh, thousand people total uh, who've made it through the program. That doesn't count the number of people who've gone into the program, which is about double that. We have, a, we have about 1,500 people in our Slack community. So that tells you the reach we have, uh, not just wow. uh, everybody, not everybody makes it through for whatever reason, but uh, they're still part yeah. of our community. Yeah, and you know, the, I think ending that class, A, A with a different mindset and some uh, new skills that they can put on the resume, uh, maybe, some, maybe some help interviewing, right? follow-up mentoring, community that they can participate in over Slack. Um, but it's also another thing that I really liked is this pay it forward yep. mentality that you have, um, you know, kind of, uh, they're not paying for the class. So tell me about your, your pay it forward program as part of the class and, and what's kind of what's been the interesting results of, of that. Yeah, I always joke with people. Every once in a while, I get a good idea. Um, the pay it forward was one of them, I think, because we're not charging anybody for the class. So we said, hey, if, if you're willing to do so, would you volunteer 18 hours um, to a, a local nonprofit in your community, which that, that's the number of hours in the class. And we get about, uh, about two thirds of the people volunteer to do it. And we have given back, I believe, and I haven't looked at the numbers for a while, but about 2,500 hours of time donated back to community, local communities that would not have happened otherwise. Um, and so, you know, we feel very proud of the fact that, that what we're doing is not only giving away free education, but we're actually, you know, getting people to work locally in, the, in the, their communities. Right. Um, and once they start, you know, the, 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 they'll show us that they've, you know, we have a form they can fill out to show us what they've done. I know a lot of them stay involved way more than 18 hours. Man, that's so very cool. Uh, this idea of creating a, so we're, we're not just helping people that are, that are trying to get back out on the workforce with a new set of skills, right. And experience yeah. We're we're building a community, right. You're building a community of, of folks that are staying together, staying in touch, you know, keep, uh, keep, uh, encouraging each other. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's there's a lot of um, suggestions and 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 whatnot about you know this company or that company or maybe this role or that role, right? So there's there's that aspect as well, but also just this this heart of we talk about servant leadership in our community, and it's it's spoken of, and I I don't mean this to step on anybody's toes, but it's spoken of pretty flippantly, right? Like oh, I'm going to serve my team, I'm going to serve, I'm going to be the type of leader that serves, but like to really create a community that says no, 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 let's let's go actually serve. Yeah. Like, let's go do it. Like that's, that puts your money uh, where your mouth is in a way that like, I don't know that people truly get in, in, in this day and age of, 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 of kind of servant leadership. Does that, does that resonate at all with you? 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, I was taught as as all agilists, you know, are taught that we are servant leaders, that that we we see the world slightly differently than other folks. And, and we believe that, you know, because we see the world differently, we have something to share. It's it's right in the magic, sure. you know, the manifesto. Um, so I've just taken it to heart that, look, I've got something that I can share with with my fellow human beings that they find valuable. Um, that helps them, but but we're not. It's not just me. I mean, we're creating almost an army of servant leaders because you know, we're, we're modeling that servant leadership through the volunteers that we have. We have many volunteers at the job actors uh, uh, who who help do what we do. Uh, help me to to and and Dave, who, who's my partner, co-founder, um, to to further our mission. Um, so you know, we're it's, we're leading by example. I think, and I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And Dave, your co-founder, he, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he went through your program at one point in time, right? Yeah. Well, everybody goes through the program. So I, I, have, a, I have a large family and, and all my kids and my wife and, and, and uh, <laughs> some relatives have gone through the program. Um, uh, the only one who hasn't yet is my 14-year-old. I told him, give him a couple of years. Um, but um, yeah, we, he was a friend of mine uh, since elementary school, and, and I hooked up with him when I moved out to uh, the Bay Area, and, and he was instrumental in getting the nonprofit set up and taking care of a lot of the stuff that, you know, I, I just don't have the time or inclination to do very well. So, you know, he always calls himself the man behind the curtain. He likes it that way, and, <laughs> and uh, we work together very well, but, but there's so many other volunteers who uh, put in their time and talents to, to help make Job Hackers a success. So. Um, you know, I can take credit for some of the ideas. I can take credit for some of the work, but it, it's really a, a big team effort and it's all a volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get to that. Right. So I, I, one of the, one of the main reasons why I was so passionate about, about this podcast is, you know, we, we at the board at Agile Uprising have been trying to figure out like, what are ways that we can, um, with everything going on in the world, right? There's, there's so many, there, it, you just feel like a mountain of like, like everything is just, it's just wrong, and sad, and it's awful, right? But there's something that we can do. And I just, I, I think reading about your organization just made me really passionate to where I said, look, we could get involved with these folks. Um, and so that's what, that's what I want to ask. I want to ask our listeners. I know that, I know that we've got listeners all across, all across the globe. Um, Larry, what, what do you need? Like if you had a wish list, I know you said some of them, like, let's just, let's just throw them out there. Like, like, yeah. who, who, like who knows who's listening? Like give, give me your wish list. What could you use right now? Okay. Well, there's all, we could always use a lot of different things, Chris. I, I mean, the, the, I always talk about the three things we need to be successful. Try to keep it simple. We got to get butts in the seats. There's a lot of people who need what we provide. Um, we, we uh, like in a previous class, we started with 220 people. We finished with about 130, 140 uh, who made it through the program. We, we're doing it through Zoom. We have, as far as I know, there's no upward limit to, to how many people we can, we can get in the class. So obviously there's people out here who hear my voice, who know people who could benefit from what we do, send them our way. The second thing we need to do is most of these people, it's 95% or more, are looking for work. They're actually people looking for work and, 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 and they're, some of them are hurting. We know that. I mean, we know how important work is and, and being engaged in the work that you do. So our second thing is how do we get in place? How do we get the experience? So if we can get people who can mentor people, who can, who can take on interns, um, who can help them find work, help them with resume writing and all the other skills that it takes to find work because some of these people you know, haven't been engaged in the workforce. We have, we have, you know, for instance, so many women who are coming back into the workforce after taking time off. And that is such a tough thing to do. So mentorship and, and anything that, you know, somebody send me an email and just say, Larry, I'll, I'll raise my hand. I'll find something for you because we've got people who have needs. The third thing is, is I don't want to call it the moonshot, but um, if we get funding, we, we run on less than 10,000 a year. If you can imagine giving away a million dollars worth of training on 10,000 a year, and all the other things that we do. If we had more money, we believe strongly that we could do a heck of a lot of the first two, which is reach more people and get more people engaged in meaningful work. So we're yeah, always yeah. looking for donations. We're a 501c3. If you want to donate, we'll take it and you can take a nice tax write off. If you're a big company who's saying, hey, we want to sponsor this, great. You know, let's let's sponsor it. Let's let's run this thing. There's there's so many ways that we can make this a very valuable resource to the community. 
And, and so, you know, having some funding would certainly help as well. Yeah. So that's a big, you know, that in my mind, that's a small list that, that seems, you know, that seems easy. All of those things easy, you know, granted, I don't, I don't run a company. I'm not responsible for hiring right now. Um, but in my mind, like if we had the right people, if we get this thing passed around enough, if we get this message passed around enough, right. We get other yep. podcasts to help out. Like, so those of you that are, those of you that I guarantee all of you are like, I need some content these days. Cause I'm yeah. running out, I'm running dry. Like, like, everybody reach out to Larry, the jobhackers.org, right? Like get, like you need to get their message out. Um, and, and if I may, right, a lot of us are at home. We're not taking, yeah. we're not taking a summer vacation. We're not, we're not traveling to conferences. All of our conferences are canceled this year. All of yeah. that time you had spent for that, right? Um, a lot of you are, are, you know, run your own, run your own on your own gig, right? You're, uh, I'm not sure what your pipeline's like, but um, I guarantee you with all of that, even just if you take the time you would have spent traveling to and working at conferences, you've got some hours that you can burn to help people get better, right? That you can, that you can be an ear. You can help them polish their speaking, polish their facilitation presentation, polish their resume, right? Um, have them maybe have them, you know, intern with you. A lot of the stuff you're going to be on Zooms anyways, let yep. them, let them listen in, let them, let them figure it, figure it out, right? Like I, I'm throwing out a challenge to our community that we, we at Agile Uprising know that we need to do more, right? We know we need to do more and there's, there's a lot of work to be done to help our community grow. I think that these people that are coming to Larry are the right people that we need in our industry. They are having spoken to a couple of them. They are authentic people. They are earnest people. They come with a hard, uh, a hard story, but also a story of, of just gratefulness and gratitude. Um, and I'm getting on a soapbox and I'm not going to get emotional, but I, I like, I, I just, I just want to, I'm making the plea for Larry. I am making so that he doesn't have to do it. I'm asking you, will you please reach out, willing to spend a few hours a week right and mentor some they also need they also need probably need people for upcoming classes to help facilitate i guarantee you all these are not classes that like you you will better your skills by helping out um helping out with the presentation or with the breakouts um or like the more people they get in these classes the more breakout leaders they need the more facilitation help that they need i guarantee you they need that um we are going to try to get we're going to get as much involved we can larry says start small yeah start don't promise too much right don't promise don't promise to send them you know a, a big fat check and a bunch of jobs don't do that just say let me start with some time right yeah. the easy thing that you can give right now is time right give a little time give a little bit of love guarantee you these are the folks in our community that need it more than anything so yeah, and, the, and the other thing about your community is you all, you got some awesome agilists in your community we have a monthly meetup we're always looking for speakers so so those folks who are going to give those great speeches and things at, at the conferences you got it all prepared so just let us know you know we'd love to get you in there we always have really really good speakers uh, we'd love to get you involved so that's a great way to get involved too um, there's just so many things. If you just raise your hand and, and say, we'll, we'll find a place for you. Yeah. Yeah. If there's, if there's one thing that our, that our, our listening audience loves to do is to have a, an opportunity to share some, share some slides and some, some stories and some words. I know you all built slides to share this year. I know I did. So I'm going to sign up the first chance I get at a monthly meetup. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even if it's just that start there, be a voice, um, be a, be someone to listen to and reach out to share your phone number, just, and like, let's, let's do something this year. Like, let's quit, let's quit being, I, I need to quit being so down in the, down in the dumps with what's going on. I need to, I need to do something with all this cabin fever that I have right now. So, um, Larry, we're gonna, we're gonna listen to an interview from some of, uh, some of your former students, but, I, but I just want to thank you for a, just being available and being like, being so generous with um, your mission and letting me like letting me just get excited uh, for you and with you and I hope that we can uh, send some people your way. Yeah, I, mean, I appreciate it. I mean, we're just we're just looking to help and, and you're a big help for us and, and getting the word out. And so, um, you know, thank you for all that you do. And, and thank you for this podcast and this opportunity. Absolutely, Larry. Absolutely.
Okay, we are back. I am so excited. I am excited to be joined by two former students. Uh, Larry told us about uh, job hackers and what they do and the folks that come through the program. We actually have two former students that are here to tell us about their journey. So, uh, Junae, uh, welcome. What would you like the uh, What would you like the audience to know about you? Oh yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for welcoming. And in these, especially in these special days, everybody is living off of the Zoom and the WebEx and etc. And this isn't a great opportunity for us to socialize. This will be a part of my socializing hours and moments <laughs> <laughs> after, sure, I, sure. after I log off from my company laptop. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah, what, yeah. how it's going to be for me. Yeah, I have a, to, just to, to be short as possible, I have been in the field and project management field for quite some time. I was before I met Larry and Job Packers, I was more of a certified project manager and IT project manager, so to be more specific. But that's when I moved to Bay Area uh, with my wife. Uh, when I moved back here to Bay Area, I had that almost two years gap on my uh, professional life because of the fact that my wife is German and she was living in Germany back then when I got married. I moved there and stayed there for almost two years. Uh, uh, did some volunteer work, but that was about it. There was nothing was professional, nothing was per, per, uh, professional or paid. So when I came back here to the Bay Area and started looking for a job, and then in the Bay Area, more specifically with this uh, area's culture, was so much different than what I used to. When back in Florida, I used to live in Florida for about like 20 years. Uh, in the IT field. So I started uh, struggling a little bit of looking, you know, and finding a job that fits me. And other than that, that I was kind of leaning to the newest adventures maybe and uh, project management sort of like what's new out there. I started reading up on these agile movement and transformations. And that's when actually one of the morning uh, round tables that Larry came to the class and introduced himself and explained what he did, what he's doing. And he invited us to, to be one of the first maybe students to the job packers is a couple of years ago. So we signed up, we were able to get in and we started in person and our class was solely in person. Back then we didn't have any Zoom classes. Zoom, uh, Zoom actually uh, as a part of the class. It wasn't sort of like a hybrid class. It was just in person, 17, 18 people and got together at 7.30 a.m. and we went through the Lewis teachings. And after that, I was one of the uh, lucky and fortunate ones to got into the agile world after the, the basic foundation of what we, we have got from uh, Larry and uh, what we have learned. Uh, uh, what Agile is all about, how much it delivers, what's the difference, how much more value you get when project, you know, the managing project sort of uh, sure. aspect. And that's when I actually ended up uh, having an Agile lead since then, I'm back and forth. Uh, I'm in the banking field, which was even more surprising. I would have never imagined to be in the banking IT departments, I have never been before. But with the Bay Area, that's how I started. I started out as a contractor, a scrum master with, uh, sure. I believe, uh, one of the major banks. I wouldn't name the name. Sure. Yeah, uh, no, we wouldn't do that. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. A okay. Major, major one of the, it, it was just a contractor job, but it was a start. And just reminding you that this was a job through, uh, the people that I met through the job hackers uh, uh, meetups in the evenings that was happening back then. Uh, as a matter of fact, our first after uh, Larry finished first class, a couple of first classes after, we introduced him to the fact that, you know, there's a lot of meetups out there, like the PMI has meetups, this one has that, and agile groups have meetups. Why don't you have, uh, you know, meetups for job hackers? Once a month, we just get together with the students because you will keep on recruiting these students and the more and more people will come and the more and more people will be in the job hackers 
database and might as well just have one day a month and people come and socialize and meet and talk to each yeah. other okay. and feedbacks everything yeah I uh the I, I heard that there's like a, a couple of thousand of you all on your Slack channel, which is in, incredible yeah. that there's um well um thank you for all that. Uh and also I want to welcome Kara. Kara, welcome, uh welcome to the podcast. We're glad you're here. Um thank what do you, you want uh what do you want listeners to know about you? <laughs> um so uh sorry, I, I laugh when I I laugh a lot, but right now I'm laughing because I'm nervous. <laughs> That's okay. Um, That's I okay. know. I know. Nothing to be. It's, we're, we're all talking around <clears throat> our virtual kitchen table. That's all um, right. We're, we're amongst friends. Um, so I am a, um, and I'm, I'm trying to get out of the habit of introducing myself as a mother first because I'm not just a mom. I'm more than just a mom, but I am a, I am a career returner. Um, after, um, I stepped out of my career as a project manager, non IT, non technical, um, project manager. I stepped out of my career seven years ago, um, to, uh, do full-time caretaking, not a decision. I regret not one single bit, sure. um, fully embraced it, um, and, um, stepped out, um, and um, my situation has changed. Um, it's time to step back in. Um, I'm also bored. Um, <laughs> my my children, my my children don't need me anymore. I have raised them in a certain way that they're relatively independent and self reliant. Um, so um, I started looking around at the lay of the land, but I had, of course, done what most women who step out do, which was I completely and totally immersed myself in the land of mommy. And sure. my network went cold. Um, so while I volunteered and I did all of these amazing things, um, they weren't a one, one for one in my old area. Sure. Um, so when I went and looked at LinkedIn, I went, I don't know any of these people. I've not talked to any of these people. Sure. Um, and I started looking around and going, what do I do? What am I, I going to do? <laughs> um, and here in the Washington DC, Baltimore area, there are a lot of great things. There are a lot of amazing things happening, but there's, nothing to lift up and support my like niche my there's nothing for moms that there's nothing for career returners sure um so i started looking and there are groups but they're either over where janae is in the bay where larry is in the bay area or they're in new york um and boston so i was like okay um started digging dug some more found um the job hackers, because I, I actually sat through, I paid for um, the certified scrum master, because I, I did realize very quickly that project management had kind of shifted. Um, and those two days, I felt so incredibly stupid. I mean, I just sat in that class and went, uh, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I understood. <clears throat> but I felt really dumb and very yeah. small. It makes sense. It, it, it like it logically, it makes sense, but you're like, but wait, what am I supposed to do with all of these? Ones right. And, and, and I, yeah. and, and, and walking away from that workshop feeling small and very frustrated. And I was like, never again, never mm -hmm. again. And so I, uh, it, but it lit a fire in me to kind of figure out what can I do to figure this out? Because, fundamentally agile and the mindset behind it because I, I i come from a nonprofit background i was like light bulb ding like the servant leader like that, that speaks to the core of who i am and i was like oh i need this in my life so um i kept digging I went to, I, I discovered um, 
women in agile signed up i just <laughs> what can i get for free um i discovered right. larry's group what can i get for free i mean it was mm -hmm. just it was like what can i do become a sponge i yes um yeah the problem is again because larry's yeah you know, it's all these great things and it's just it's here 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 but i still find myself yeah. going hands-on i need that hands-on so that when i have an employer who goes this is all great but what have you actually done right so i'm i'm, I'm volunteering and trying to translate mm -hmm. those pieces so that's where i'm at that's me in a nutshell oh and i'm a photographer <laughs> wonderful so um you know you said something Kara, that i'm curious of both of you because you, when you said hey i paid for and sat through the csm right which for the record how most uh, yeah. of us got because most how most of us got introduced to it right um strangely enough i took the product owner course before i took the scrum master but that's story for another day um you do get all of these role specific things this is what scrum mastering is and this is what the role means to you and there's a little bit amount of time spent on because um, you know you only have two days um you got a little bit of time to spend on the mindset and the principles and the origin and, and the that kind of breaking both of you all through that fixed mindset that that kind of fixed project manager mindset that box that you all that was all you knew and now you're being asked to step out of it what what was it like and I'll start with you this first this time, Kara. What was it like going through the material at Job Hackers? That what set it apart from what you got through with like the Scrum Master course? Um. Well, so most, at least, at least I can speak to my parents' experience, growth mindset and that kind of concept is not new for me it's something that at least in my school district and where where my kids are concerned where my kid is concerned that's something that i'm relatively familiar with um and while it's like natural for my child it's not natural for me so it's something i work at sure um and when i don't know there was a way in which larry even though larry because it was six weeks of material um there was just there were ways in which larry would present things that i was like oh wow um he, i I had a lot of, you could say two and two equal four during the CSM, but I, I, I looked at it and I went, okay, yeah, that makes sense, but it didn't actually make sense. I mean, I, I instinctively understood it, but when Larry presented the materials in the course and showed i guess step by step how two and two equal four it was the way in which he mapped it out or presented gotcha. it that i was like ding 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 winner winner chicken dinner okay okay janae what about you like what was what was different from you know the typical standard you know training courses that we go through what what made larry's class so different Yes, the difference is, and when you take a look at the CSM courses or any other courses like CSM or Scale, uh, Scrum Master, whichever courses you go out there and take it as a Scrum Master, that you, uh, you are taking that course and you're covering the material that's going to help you pass the exam, right? Well, exam is based on the literature knowledge, a little bit of a case studies and etc. So uh, the, what Larry introduces with that six, seven weeks, and including the, all the other additional topics he covers, tech depths, cognitive biases, 
all these uh, all these specific areas he goes through he not only introduces you and helps you understand and learn what you need to know to pass the exam but behind why people decided to go agile is the most important part of that uh, job hackers and more specifically Larry's class. It explains to you like exactly what Kara said, like ding, ding. Yeah, I now, not only I understand, but I comprehend it actually sinks in. Now that actually helps you to be more passionate about going out there and trying to find that first hands-on experience on uh, Scrum Master, like on an Agile. And that's an sure. introduction to the Agile transformation, the Agile world. The easiest is to find that uh, first Scrum Master and position that you can possibly start with, with the Agile teams or Agile transforming teams. So within that uh, six, seven weeks of that exercise, he also introduces lots of books that actually lead to the agile transformation. Most importantly, started out in the IT industry, etc. Explains to you, the, this, that's, this is a full package. And in the end of, and I always say that, and I always say that with all my heart, it, uh, there is always a part where you take any kind of certification, you pass it, even in that case, you, you may know the most perfect knowledge and literature knowledge that you might possibly have for that specific position. But when it comes to the, that uh, going out there to meet the people who are already in the field, in the industry is the most important part also of finding the job, right? And meeting the yeah. right people. So Larry continues that with after six, seven weeks of finishing course is not done. If you continue coming to the beat-ups, joining the these like a live session, online, Zooming, whatever and whoever that he introduces, keeps on introducing many more people he introduces in the agile world, actual industry who holds jobs, who might hire people for the jobs. That's what makes yeah. it different. That's what- You know, it's fun. You know, it's funny. I found it's like like I found my first job, I told, mentioned that major right. bank contractor scrum master through Larry's connections on the, yeah. you know, the recruiters. Yeah, it's the same, you know, what's, what's, what's heartwarming about the story is that the same things happen for us whenever, whenever you go to scrum meetups or agile meetups locally, uh, there's always someone that knows of some place that's hiring, right? So there's, I never fail. Someone's gonna walk through that can't stand their job. That's like, my boss sucks. This is not going the way that I thought it was. Well, someone's like, man, we need a scrum master or we need a product owner or we need a coach or whatnot. I, I do like what you said though about teaching not to pass a test, but teaching to, it's almost like a combination of what Kara was saying about teaching teaching how to instill that growth mindset in you. But also I'm not teaching for, I'm not teaching to an exam. I'm teaching to your heart, right? I'm teaching, I'm not here to give your mind something. You can read a book and your mind can get something. You can pay thousands of dollars and your mind can get something, but I'm here to like put something in your heart. Um, I mean, that, that does something to you at the end of the course. Uh, and I feel like Kara, like that's what you were saying when you were talking about like, you, you know, just going all in, like diving in is that, is that you, you got a taste of some information that your brain probably needed, but really what was going to was he was teaching to your heart. Is that, yeah. does that resonate at all with you? It does. Well, and so Janae was talking about the, like the books. So, uh, you know, as I was sitting through my one course, it, there were okay these are book recommendations and you know you will leave with a list of books that you can read but as you're going through the agile mba you already you come to the class with books that you 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 have a kind of like college you have books that you in or as you go through the class you know that you're going to be discussing those books. They're part mm -hmm. of the curriculum. So Drive by Daniel Pink and 
Uh, and I know that Larry has changed some of the books. Like we didn't read the cucumber book because they decided that it was a little too technical for the non-technical folks like me. <laughs> I'm not um, technical either. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But, um, but at the same time, when they were discussing some of the stuff that they used to refer to in that book, uh, I was kind of intrigued. So I did go and ask some of my friends that are, I was like, do you have that book? Can, can I borrow it? Because um, I was interested. Sure. And, you know, and on the Slack board, they, they said, you know, if you're not technical, just read these chapters. Um, but knowing that I had books to read in order to be able to get the most out of the material, um, it just really helped me dive deep um, yeah. and get the most out of um, the, the program. Um, it really deepened my knowledge. Um, okay. So it was, it was great. And, and maybe that's, maybe that's what I needed. I don't know. Another, another just, I just would like to mention here on that training is, so uh, when you go out to CSM, when you go out to uh, whichever like product owner and trainings or courses or classes, you come out of that uh, course uh, ready to take that specific exam, right? Uh, product owner exam or scrum master exam. What Larry provides is more like all together, one kind of bundle. When you come out of that, the more specific example from our from our same class, which we took seven, we were 17, I believe 18 people. And mm -hmm. one of us uh, became a product owner and I became a scrum master and a couple of guys and uh, one lady decided to go for coding, right? That's, that's the difference here. Of out of this class, you can be any part of that role. Like, and that's the, that's another important difference that I see from the from that training. So that's really awesome. Um, another thing that Larry told me about that I'm really excited to hear from you all on is this idea of joining a volunteer or joining a community of volunteers, right? Because again, nobody's doing this for pay, right? Um, right. And, and, you know, for, for the record, a lot of what I decided to do when I was earlier on in my career and still do, right? And most of the time when I speak at conferences, I'm not making extra money to go there, right? And when I, when I write on my blog, I'm not doing it because I'm, I'm making a ton of ad revenue, right? Like we don't, we don't do agile uprising because it's putting, it's putting money in our pocket. We're doing this just because like, we feel like it's something we should be doing. We do things that we, we want to do. Tell me about, uh, Janae, I'll start with you. Tell me about what it was like, um, first off receiving free education from volunteers, people doing this out of the kindness of their hearts, but also being asked to join that volunteer community afterwards. Like, what does that do to you uh, and your approach to like your work when this is, it's not a financial transaction. This is a, uh, again, going, this is, this is a transaction of the heart that we're doing. What, what was that? What is that like for you? Um, Maybe the most important part of it is I didn't even know this. Uh, I had been volunteering with my life several times with the several different institutes. I never knew the detail of how much, what's the section or how much of a volunteer community that is in terms of the government's eyes. Like uh, there are certain numbers that you uh, gain from the, the locals or state that uh, either, either you are fully going back and spending your money back to the actually volunteering or some of them does actually some sort of like, uh, I don't know, uh, some budgeting, some financials. And the Larry is first and most important is Larry is that one of those volunteering groups uh, that fully spends whatever one penny he does make uh, actually collect as a, um, like whoever, whichever company decides to actually contribute he spends it back to the trainings, including the meetups, 
and including the networking, social networking, everything comes back to the students who come, who come there for free, getting education and trying to make it, uh, maybe possibly find a job in the future. So that, yeah. that part, that makes you feel like, oh, this is a truly giving group or giving uh, job hacker, um, whatever he does, he gives it back to the students, period. He yeah. even, that, so funny that he even has these grants to the students if you like, uh, if you uh, join this survey, you get like a hundred and fifty dollars of PSF exam paid for you. Like it's so funny. He tries to even not only gives and provides the teaching, but also monetary values that he tries to give it back to the students. Like wow. students, a couple of the students were able to pass the exam for free, PSM exam, because the Larry provided that for them. That's so cool. That's an Kara, what a, Yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. I I I, uh, I did not know that. That uh, that just that makes me makes me happy to know that that he's able to do that. Uh, Kara, what about you? Tell me about like what it was like joining a a, a community of volunteers. Uh, well, I mean, volunteering is kind of. I mean, that's it's always kind of that's part of. Um, my ethos. So um, when I saw the pay it forward uh, thing, that was already something that I was like, okay, done. That was something I automatically was like, but I can do that. Check. Sure. Um, and um, I actually need to clock some of my hours. I need to go back in and um, do that because uh, I've already <laughs> done some some of the stuff that I just I need to clock the hours. Um, and um just on the slack channel this today someone posted something there's a there's a group um again an, an, another nonprofit group that's similar uh, that they actually run scrum simulations but they also need people um when they're not doing like the scrum stuff to like fundraise and copy edit and content and uh, write content. And I was like, um, fundraiser that I, I fundraise. So, you know, for my days in PT, PTA fundraiser. <laughs> so yeah. Hello. <laughs> so, I, you know, that's, that for me was just a no brainer. Um, didn't even have to think about that. And, um, I've already, uh, I, I guess we get credit if, um, if people sign up for job hackers and then tell them that we're, they're signing up through us or something. And I've already sent like three people their way. Um, I don't know if they actually told them, oh yeah, Kara sent us, but, but um, I was like, you need to do this program. So. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So um, I would say that there might be someone in here that's interested in some training and we're definitely going to provide um, the information to go to, to, to learn more about the job hackers. But I guess for both of you, like for those in our audience that would be interested in volunteering and helping out those in the community, this will be my last question. We'll be done. Okay. Um, but what would you all say, to members of our, our Agile Uprising community, um, if they were thinking about maybe stepping in and saying, I'd like to volunteer and help, like what would you, what would you say to them? Be intentional. Um, I, I see, at least from where I stand, um, I see a lot of, a lot of things, um, but, um be intentional in what you offer think about what it is that you're trying to achieve because there are a lot of there are a lot of great products out there there are a lot of great things out there but there are a lot of groups there are a lot of individuals who either cannot achieve or cannot who not achieve but can't 
what's available is beyond their means or is unattainable because what um, what's required either the times or what is the prerequisite in order to entry in order to enter are such that make it completely and totally unaccessible. So be intentional in what you do and offer and think about that when you're doing it. Awesome. Janae, what about you? And what I would say is just, just to start out small, even if like smallest time you have, and just to, just to commit to certain, maybe smallest possible contribution uh, makes a lot of difference in the others' lives too, in volunteering. Yep. And pick up, don't be afraid to fail because, you know, this is volunteering job in the end. Amen. Of, yeah, in the end of the day, we are all here to help provide, help each other, you know, uh, as much as we can. And failing is possibility. Most of the time, you we learn from our, you know, failures too. So, just because even if you even if you happen to fail, don't be afraid. Just commit. Simply smallest amount may be possible, but just commit. What did Thomas Edison say about failure? Yeah, I no. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I mean, forgot. yeah, but exactly. I mean, how many times did he fail, and yeah, only to right. achieve at the end? I mean, every failure was a success. Yeah, because he learned from every failure. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I'm so glad I got to meet yeah, both of you. Definitely, that is this is so great. 